Correlational research. Remember, I said that correlational research is weak in internal validity, but it's generally high in external validity. So it often serves as a first step in supporting the hypotheses. But once we've collected data, we need to actually analyze the data to see if our data support our hypothesis or to see if our data support our research question. And while we're analyzing the data, we need to remember two critical goals. One is to understand the patterns that exist in our data and two, to not be deceived. And it turns out that we have a powerful tool to guard against deception, and that is graphics. Graphics are probably the greatest tool that we have to guard against deception. They have a way of showing you a relationship quickly and intuitively, and they highlight both problems and uncertainty. Now let's review some nomenclature. Remember, an independent variable is something that is manipulated. If it's not manipulated, generally it's not appropriate to call it an independent variable. Instead, we tend to call it a predictor variable. Likewise, in a non-experiment, a dependent variable is not called a dependent variable, but it's usually called an outcome variable. So how do we visualize correlational research? Well, it depends on the type of variable that we're looking at. More specifically, if the predictor variable or the independent variable is categorical or numeric. If it's numeric, we use a scatter plot. So on the x-axis is the predictor, on the y-axis is the outcome. And what you're looking for is a pattern, a positive pattern, like in this example, which means that as the x-axis increases, the y-axis increases, or a negative relationship, as in this example, which means as the x-axis increases, the y-axis decreases, or we might be looking for a curvilinear relationship, which means that y doesn't grow at the same rate as x increases. For more details, see my video about interpreting graphics. If the predictor is categorical, on the other hand, we have several options. We can use box plots, where this represents the median, these represent the uh, 25th and 75th percentiles, and these roughly represent the minimum and the maximum. Or we could use violin plots, which is like a histogram flipped over on its side. We could use standard error plots, which plot the mean and the standard error, or my favorite, what I call the median dot plot, which shows the median, the interquartile range, or in other words, the 75th and the 25th percentile, and it shows the raw data points, but they've been randomly shuffled side to side so they don't overlap too much. What you're looking for in these sorts of graphics is a higher concentration of scores in one group than on the other. So for example, on this one, we have higher scores on the left side than we do on the right side, meaning the treatment group has higher scores on the outcome than the control group. And to learn more information about these sorts of relationships and plotting them, see the video linked in the description. Great, so we've done graphics. Now what do you do? Graphics are fantastic, they're amazing, they're great, but they have their limitations. It is very easy to see what you want to see, to engage in confirmation bias. But numbers give us something very concrete. For numeric relationships, one number or one statistic that we use is called the correlation coefficient, or we shorten it with R. I've never thought about what R stands for. Maybe it means relationship, I don't know. I swear I'm a statistician. Now R ranges from negative one to positive one. Negative one means there's a perfect negative relationship, as in this example. Positive one means there's a perfect positive relationship, like in this example. And zero means there is no relationship. So in psychology, what is considered strong? Well, that's a good question. Basically anything 0.1 or lower is considered weak. 0.3 is considered moderate and 0.5 is considered strong. But those numbers assume a linear relationship. But sometimes we have a nonlinear relationship. In this sort of situation, the correlation coefficient is very misleading and should not be used. Now, if we're trying to measure the strength of a categorical relationship, we use a different metric. We can use what's called Cohen's D. D basically means how many standard deviations different are the two groups. So as far as benchmark what's considered large and small and that sort of thing. 0.3 is generally considered small, 0.5 is considered moderate, and 0.8 is considered large. Or if we combine this information, this is a strong or a 0.5 correlation, this is a moderate or a 0.3 correlation, and this is a 0.1 or a weak correlation. And for numeric variables, this is a large difference or a 0.8 Cohen's D, this is a moderate or a 0.5 Cohen's D, and this is a small or a 0.3 Cohen's D. Now let me make one final comment. Let's say that both numbers and graphics support an interesting conclusion. For example, that sleep and anxiety are correlated. You might be thinking, hey, if you have anxiety, you just need to sleep more. Remember though, we're doing non-experimental research. These numbers might be deceiving because there could be a directionality problem. So maybe anxiety causes sleep disturbances, not that less sleep causes less anxiety. There's also the third variable problem, which we've talked about before. Maybe stress causes anxiety and sleep disturbances. You can't rule these out as explanations with just this graphic and just these numbers. So correlations can suggest causal relationships, but they're very weak evidence for causal relationships. It's basically just a suggestion, one that should be followed up with experimentation if possible, and if not, then we can use some more sophistics, statistics, algorithms, and that sort of thing. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, the importance of visualization. Visuals are amazing because they make
make it easy to interpret what is going on and they highlight problems with your data. Weaknesses of visualization. It's very easy to participate in confirmation bias and to see something that's not really there. R versus D. R is the correlation coefficient, which is designed to measure the strength of the relationship between two numeric variables, and D, or Cohen's D, which is designed to assess how different two groups are. And remember the benchmarks for both of them. 0.1, 0.3, and 0.5 for the correlation, 0.3, 0.5, and 0.8 for Cohen's D. Correlation and causation. So correlation gives very weak evidence for causation, but you can use it to generate hypotheses and identify what might be worth experimenting, or at least doing more advanced statistical controls. So with that, we'll see you next time.